Hi everyone, uh, I'm Chris Greco. I'm an advanced ground instructor. This is one of the first um, <clears throat> first videos in this series. But what I wanted to do was to make sure that uh, you take technology into consideration. I teach private pilot ground school. I've taught the drone, the, the drone ground school. Um, and the one thing I noticed is that when you're explaining something, it's really good to illustrate it. Now, a lot of the students, I shouldn't say a lot of the students, many of the students uh, don't have flight instruction going along with this knowledge test prep. So what happens is, is they can't really, they can't really figure out how things work. I mean, they, they're trying to get it theoretically in their head and apply it, but it's really difficult to do that. So what I wanted to do was to show you how to use X-Plane 12 a flight simulator that I prefer to try to supplement the material that is in that um, that is in the book, and I think if we do that, I think if you if you sit back and you, you try to make that work, I think it'll it'll work a lot better. So I'm hoping that doing that will will help you to illustrate the different theories that go along with that. So we're going to do that today with center of gravity and we're going to we're going to <clears throat> talk about center of gravity and we're going to talk about how to apply it in X-Plane 12. So stay with me. So here we are at the X-Plane 12 and I think this is important to understand is that uh, you know X I, <clears throat> I take in a laptop with me for the advanced ground instructor course or the um, the private pilot course I teach as an advanced ground instructor and I use X-Plane 11 because X-Plane 11 is a little less uh, memory hog than X-Plane 12 so I can put it on a laptop and I take it in. I have, uh, <laughs> I have 16 gigabyte of RAM on, on the laptop and it does great. I mean it does really good. So one of the, and one of the things I love is to be able to bring in aeronautical charts into the simulator which I can do here. So it's, it's really neat. Uh, <clears throat> so let's start out. First thing you're going to see is you're going to see the uh, um, you're going to see the uh, the Cessna Skyhawk. That's what I want. I want to get, and you'll see weight and balance and fuel, right? And start with engines running. I always do that, and I always uh, so I I just love the ability for this thing to work. I wanted to go back real quick um, because I do Triangle North Executive, and uh, which is right down here, Lewisburg, North Carolina, and the parking area, which is uh, a lot of a lot of the simulators will start you on the runway. That's that's not where you start. You don't do start up on the runway. You do start up in the parking area. So it's not really realistic. And I always set myself to the parking area to be able to do that. And to set yourself to the parking area, it's really pretty easy. Just go to this and double click on this, and it'll give you the entire airport. And you can put your airplane wherever you want in in that parking area. So that's kind of nice. Uh, the weather, I, I don't, I do it. You can actually download real weather. So that you can get a real weather perspective on this thing in real time or whatever else. I usually set it to VFR view, a uh, few clouds, and uh, you know whatever the day is, which is fine. It's, it works, and usually in, usually around noon time or 10 o'clock, something like that. So so, anyways, that that's what I do. And this is pretty amazing. This is the Skyhawk, which you can do with this thing. And I started again. I started on the uh, uh, on the uh, parking area. And then I wanted to show you this. This is so cool. This actually gives you um, the map. So this is the this is the aeronautical chart uh, done with what they call iFly. And iFly is set up. You can set up to sync to the simulator. You can set up to sync to the simulator. So you can actually be like you can plot a course. You can do all kind of stuff here. Uh, we we'll use this later on when we're talking about VORs um, because what I'll do is I'll set the VOR to uh, RDU and then I'll set a, a specific bearing and then we'll I'll show you what happens when you go off that bearing or when you stay on the bearing or whatever else so you can actually do that otherwise what you're doing is um, you're you're spending time with the CFI which you should spend time with the CFI this is not this does not take the place in any way shape or form of real honest to God flight instruction you should do that um, but what it does is it prepares you for the knowledge test it helps to prepare you for the knowledge test, um, but I highly recommend you go out and get some flight instruction. I mean, uh, a lot of people think, oh, I can do the whole thing with a simulator. Well, 
you know, theoretically you should be able to, but the bottom line is, is you don't have that um, push on the, on the seat of your pants. You don't have that, that lift. You, it, you don't feel the airplane. You know, the whole reason Lindbergh said it, you know, Lindbergh did a, um, Charles Lindbergh, who was first one to fly across the Atlantic in 1920s, in 1920s, uh, uh, 20s or 30s. I can't remember what it was now. Dang, um, that's kind of sad. But basically what he did was he, um, he he wrote a book called. He, he kept referring to to his flight as we. We did this. We did that. He was solo flight. It was a solo flight. We he was one with the airplane, and that's what you got to be. Kind of kind of be one with the airplane, and you can't do that with the simulator. But you can apply some good solid theory with that. So that's that's kind of cool. And uh, I always I just love technology. The ability for technology to be able to to put people in there. And this, I mean, this is so great. I mean, you can actually see the plane, where the plane is heading. Um, uh, and it's sitting on the parking area. And it's, you can see where it's heading. So it's, it's, it's so neat. It's so cool the way, the way this thing can, can kick in. And it shows all the different uh, surrounding airports and, and all kind of different areas. So highly recommend it. So anyways, let's, let's move on here. And, and let's, let's move through this. Uh, because basically all I'm doing is I'm just kind of setting this thing up, setting up the radio, setting up you know, parking, and I'm just taking off. Now, uh, I took off midfield, which uh, probably not cool, but it's, it, works, it works with this type of airplane and, and this type of weather. So um, I'm off. Off the runway. Now, at this point, what I did was I went ahead and went back. Now, I wanted to show you something. Um, this is where you would go uh, if you wanted to get this screen, right? And I just want to pause it here for a second because I think this is important to, to go over. So I wanted to... Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, no, I didn't want that. So the... Um, so this right here... General Sound Graphics Network Data Input Joystick Keyboard and VR VR Hardware. VR Hardware is, is if you're going to do virtual, um, um, you know, the virtual goggles. And I've tried that, and to tell the truth, I've never gotten airsick in my life. I get airsick on those virtual goggles. It's just it's like weird stuff. But that was when I was flying the helicopter, so there's a lot of changes, uh, you know, with the helicopter aspect. Anyways. Uh, General Sound Graphics Network. A network is where you set that sync with the iFly, and I'll show you that in a, in a, a subsequent video. Uh, data output. There's a green print. Let me show you. Let me show you. There's a green print here. See that green print right there? So that green print you can do with data output. You can actually see different things. Velocity aspects. Um, you can see throttle. You can see the... Uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, different the different indicators. It's kind of neat because you can see the actual data output of what's going on. So it's kind of kind of cool. Uh, you know, I, I kind of like that every once in a while. I'll take a look at it. So, anyways, that's enough of that. So now I wanted to show you this. Come on. So. So what we're going to do is, is we are going to go to New Flight, go to the Main Menu, go to New Flight, because you have to go to Main Menu for that. Um, main Menu is, the, is this over here, this right here. There's your Main Menu, because you hit Main Menu, boom, you get New Flight. Uh, new Flight, now you can kind of mess with that. You can customize. Go to Customize right here. Go to customize, and what you'll do is is you will start to mess with the with the weights, um, with the weight and balance. So it's 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 really neat. Uh, and here it is, and now you can start to mess with the balance. You can do payload weight, pilot, co-pilot, left rear packs. Now what does that do? Well, what it does is it changes your center of gravity, changes your center of gravity. What happens when you change your center of gravity? You're going to you're going to change the performance of the airplane. You're going to change the performance of the airplane because you're changing where that center of gravity is located. So what I did was I, I messed with some weights. I don't know whether you could see it or not, so let me just pop, let me pop back here real quick. 
and show you what I did. So what I did was I, I messed with the rear packs, the rear packs, I made it more. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creasing the weight on the rear, right? So what does that do? When you make your weight to the rear, what does that do to the to the um to the center of gravity? It makes it more. It it, it moves it. It moves it to the right, right? It moves it. It's so all of a sudden your center of gravity is more aft because you're moving all the weights to the rear, right? So when you do that, what does that do? Well, it, you're going to have to first push your push your uh, joystick forward, right, to keep it just straight and level. That's number one, right? And number two is it changes the stalling speed, as you can see right here. So I mean, all that all that area, you you start changing your stalling speed because you moved your center of gravity. So that I mean, it's really interesting how the theory works in application. Theory works in application. So I pause it again, and again you can see the um, see the green stuff here. New flight again, and I want to show you some more uh, when you customize it. Go into weight and balance, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all this, and then I'm going to change it, and I'm going to put the co-pilot as more, and the, the pilot and co-pilot as more weight. So what does that do? Well, it changes the center of gravity more forward, right? So it, it's going to change it more forward. What does that do? Well, you're going to have to change it more forward so you're going to have cut constant nose down situation and you're going to have to you know put pull it back a little bit like I'm trying to do here pull it back and you can see I'm starting to lose lose airspeed here you know so the 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 idea is is you're changing your stall speed you know as you're uh, I mean I shouldn't say that. the stall speed doesn't change right I mean the stall speed it's it, the stall speed is the stall speed but what happens is is that uh, I shouldn't say that. Stall, stall speed can change because you're changing, basically the the, uh, the 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 characteristics of the airplane. You're changing the characteristics of the airplane. Same as if you have more fuel on one side of the wing, on one side than the other side. All those all those areas. So you have to just you take a look at this and see how that see how that all works, and show the student how it works whenever you change those those that characteristic. So I think that's pretty important too. So I mean, that's basically the the whole idea behind this was just to try to get people to understand how it, how it all works. And and the thing I like about this is you can actually change the um, you can change the actual center of gravity. You can actually move the center of gravity right or left, um, you know, to to the after, to, you know, plus or minus, which is which is really kind of neat. So and I can I can actually move this. I can move this. This way, I can move it this way. You know, you notice when you move when I move it this way, all of a sudden, you know, see how that see how the pilot see how it works. Move it the other. The the pilot starts to lose weight. These baggage starts to gain weight. So I I just I love being able to to manipulate that whole situation and be able to make that work. So I mean, there it is. I mean, there's the. I mean, I'm constantly trying to keep this straight and level. I'm not trimming at this point in time. I'm just doing straight straight controls so I mean it's so see uh, now all of a sudden boom I lost it well I went to kind of a spin there I'll let it go um, put that I put that right right aileron, aileron in there it is I'm, so I'm getting into a spin there I'm gonna have to there's my there's my airspeed going off the off the walls here so I mean all these things. Plus, you can figure out, you know, how you're doing in the spin. I, you know, am I, am I uh, um, gaining altitude? What's going on? That type of thing. So I, I really like using simulators to try to supplement the whole idea behind this. And I think it's kind of important to be able to make that work. So I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think uh, uh, I just wanted to show you exactly what happens from the standpoint of what what will occur whenever something like this you can bring into the classroom and show the students exactly what happens at certain times I think that really helps to cement that theory and concept that they're trying to learn at that point in time Well, I hope that uh, this was really valuable to you. You take a look at it, you take a look at X-Plane 12, and you, you take a look and see how that can help you with different situations. So the next time I think what we'll do is, 
is we'll talk about VORs. And uh, the VORs are, it's really an interesting chapter in the Private Pilot book, but it's nice to be able to see in the airplane how that needle goes whenever you're in relationship to the station itself. And if we're going we're gonna to mess with that, we're actually going to mess with the OBS and look at the CDI needle and see how that works with that with the to and the from and all those different situations so you can kind of gain a perspective as what's going on and hopefully what you're going to do is take is get x-plane 12 and uh, use it use it you know just and I'll show you um, within one of these videos I'll show you how I set how I set up my setup my simulator setup and how I try to make it as easy as possible so I think uh, hopefully that along with that explain 12 will help you to get a perspective as to what's going on so I, I really hope this was um, valuable to you please subscribe if you if you like these types of videos and um, I will see you next time and on the private pilot test prep using flight simulators